What is Minichat's dynamic content block and how can you use that in your bot? We're gonna talk about that in the three video series and we're gonna talk about that now. All right, let's get started here. Today, we're going to, well, number one is the bot pause is over. Yeah, it was just announced at Facebook F8, Developers F8 Conference that they've opened everything up again so we can build bots for everybody and anybody. Yay. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, though, here, besides that, uh, the mini chat dynamic content. It's a new feature that allows you to do two things. One, you can send data out to a server, for example, like Active Campaign, kind of like what you do with Zapier, though it re re would replace Zapier. And what it allows you to do is send information to another server, an API, that's what we call them, application programmer interface. It's basically a program that allows you to talk to another system. And in that case, it's it, one type of transaction. You can send data out. The other one is you send data out and expect something back. So we're going to go into detail on that and we'll talk about examples. So let's get into that. We're going to go into a flow that I started building here. And we're going to talk about dynamic content. So it's, what happened is, you know, you come up and you have a message and then the dynamic content block is right down here. You have to have the pro version to use it, but you would click on that and you'd get this dynamic purple kind of contact thing and then you would go into it and build it. And so let's go into this one. We're going to look at it. Like I was talking, you have two types of requests that you can send out. One is a post and one is a get. A post is going to send data out and you're not expecting anything back. So it's very similar to when you're adding somebody to active campaign using Zapier because Zapier is like an API. And so what you're doing is you're connecting to that API, sending them information. And then Zapier is going to contact the actual API at active campaign and they're going to process that request and then they're going to come back. So that's what a post is. A post allows you to send information to a server that's going to do something with that information and then they're going to send a status back. You don't expect anything else back except status. Was it okay or not? A get is something where you're going to send a request out with some information and then you're going to expect something back. So as I indicated, the post is something like you're updating a database, like Active Campaign. A get is something where you're sending a request out and saying, I want this information, and then it's going to send it back, and you're going to format it into JSON data and put it into Messenger through Minichat. So that would be kind of like, let's say, a dealership, and you want to display all the cars that they have in inventory. And as long as you have access to that database through an API, you can go out, get that data, format it, and send it back into Messenger. So it's open up all the opportunities. Yeah, you have Zapier, but Zapier is only limited to the outside systems that it's connected to. This opens up everything. And actually, at a post, and I've been working on that as far as an active campaign post, so you eliminate some costs by doing it directly here because you can get a server for free that you can run this, this server programs on, which will call the APIs and send data back. And it's really not going to cost anything. The only cost would be is to hire somebody to do it, like me, if you, can't, if you don't understand how to do that. It is a great feature that they've added to allow you to do some of these things. And you don't have to rely on Zapier if you don't want. You know, and there's some customers that, you know, don't want to take that cost. And so you could actually update Active Campaign and do some things without using Zapier. That's the request type. 
And so then what you're going to have, is you're going to have a URL. A URL is going to be the API that you're calling, the program that you're calling, or it's called an endpoint. Basically, you're going to call an endpoint saying, okay, I'm going to call this program, and I'm going to pass them some data, and then they're going to do something with it, regardless if it's a post or a get. And then you have headers, request headers. Basically, what that does is it explains what kind of data you want to send out and what kind of data you want back in. The body only applies to a post. If you go to a get, you don't have body. You put the parameters in the URL as, as query strings. But the body is going to be JSON code that you're going to pass out there to that API. And then the response is just basically the status. How did it work? You know, you get closer, it gets a little <laughs> kind of cool. So that's pretty much it. That's how it works. You're going to you're going to have a URL, you're going to tell it a post or a get. You're going to maybe pass some data if it's a post and you're going to run it and it's going to do all the information. Now, there's a little help button down here. And that help button brings up the format that you need to send back to ManyChat or Messenger. And these this is JSON format. And the JSON format is what ManyChat or actually Messenger understands. And so you have to format it in the correct way, otherwise it's not going to work. And so this is JSON data. And basically what you have is here's the version and the content that you always have to have that. And then you have different response types as messages, actions, and quick replies. So you're kind of familiar with that. We do messages all the time in ManyChat. Here's a message. Here's a user input. Here's image, list, card, gallery, file, video. All those types of things, they're here. So you're building them and sending them back with the data that you collected outside, let's say on a get. And that's where it usually comes into play. Now, even on a post, you can still send some JSON back to ManyChat. And so let's say you updated a record or you created a record in Active Campaign and you want to tag that subscriber, you can do that. It can, it can do that, but it's not expected back data to be processed. When you do a post, a get, you're expecting something back. So if we go back down here, let's say messages. So now messages format. And so we kind of talked about all these things that you can add in are all here. Text. You can do an image. You can do a video. You can do audio. You can do a file like a PDF. You can do cards. So basically gallery cards. You can do a list. You can do buttons, all different types of buttons, call button, a URL button, a share button a go to node button, a go to flow button, and a buy button. So when you're bringing all that information back, you could put a buy button on there. And dynamic block callback button. And then you have the actions. And you can add a tag. You can remove a tag. You can update a custom field. And then you have quick replies. Go to node, quick reply, go to flow, a dynamic block, callback, quick reply. So basically, if you go back up here, this is the format that you have to send back so that ManyChat and Messenger understand what you want to display within Messenger. So that's pretty much what it is, is you can have this, and I can show you here too, is you have a block that you can use so you grab it here and you have to have the pro version to do this but you also have an action so you could do an action an external request and you could do an action and there it is same thing so you you can implement this in two different ways you can use an action or you can use a block and they function the same way and they'll do the same thing so that's pretty much the overview of the mini chat dynamic content block 
and action. In this video, like I said, I want to do an overview, kind of get you to understand what it is and what it does. And I'm just going to show you on a whiteboard just a little bit. So what we're going to do is here's ManyChat. And ManyChat is the client. So you have a client that's going to put a request in. <laughs> Not too good with the mouse writing like that. Uh, the client, ManyChat, is going to put a request in to a server. API that's going to call another API and pass some information back. So what we're passing is JSON. That's what we're expecting. Now, you can get XML, you can get text. There's other things that could pass back, but we want JSON. JSON is what we understand on this end, and that's what we want back. Now, we're passing JSON back here too. As you can see, in this post, I'm passing JSON. So we're pass passing JSON data over to this API. So the client's gonna call a server, the server API is gonna call another API on a out way outside server, like active campaign, do some things and then send some back. Now, in this case, in the post, it's going to send a status and the status is going to come back to many chat and say, hey, it was all okay. So that's, that's basically what it is. That's what you're doing. You're bringing the outside data in. And the greatest part is, is well, a couple of great parts, but one of them is you could actually eliminate Zapier to point and have not have that additional cost. You know, not that I'm going to get rid of Zapier and a lot of people aren't, but it's an opportunity because you may have clients that don't want to spend the extra money. And so now you have an option to actually bring them on. Plus, you can bring data in places that Zapier can't touch because they don't have it programmed in. So now you can program it. Well, that concludes our video for today on the ManyChat Dynamic Content Block. There is two more videos in this series and it will give you more detail. Here we went over a summary, just kind of what that is and what can you do with it. Next two videos, a little more detail, you're gonna get in and get your hands dirty a little bit and understand how this all works together, how you can call the outside and bring data in. The link to get those other two videos is down in the description. You're gonna be sent to Messenger and you need to, to answer a few questions and you'll get the videos right in Messenger and you can watch them. And like I said, I do have a course coming out and a membership on all this so that we can build great APIs and great chatbots that are smarter and quicker and, and getting more data into them and having the experience for our subscribers even better. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Be happy to answer them. And as always, like the video, share it across the world, and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video. I'll actually see you on the other side. Sign up for the other two videos. Enable to... We're going to talk about that now. <laughs>